within the field of learning or teaching there's two concepts that can also help you in your reading since reading is learning that's what the goal is and that's the distinction versus learning by instruction and learning by discovery learning by instruction is when you have a guide a, a secondary source almost to navigate to help you navigate through the problems you're facing to increase your understanding and that's typically in the form of a teacher that's the form I'm most familiar with there's a teacher at the front who delivers his lectures, lessons, sermons on a particular concept, an idea, and with his resources, he's the ones he's the one communicating the understanding to us. Whereas learning by discovery is kind of a bottom down, bottom up approach, where we have to learn within ourselves, and it's. You can see it like a therapist. A good therapist is not the one who solves your problem, but the one who asks you the right questions. And what I mean by that is the therapist asks you questions that are cleverly framed. And then it's you actually who has to do the, the thinking. And it's you who has to take those questions and use them to navigate your own problems. The solution comes from within yourself. He just gives you the context and the framework for that to happen. You can also think about it like philosophers, with philosophers. Philosophers don't really use secondary sources, at least in the past they didn't. But rather they had a, a simple question or a concept and they would navigate that with their own reflection, their own research, their own investigation. And the answer kind of came out from all of these elements and coalesced into the solution. And there's two kind of presumptions we might make in these, which I want to debunk, let's say. The first is that instruction or discovery is better than one or the other. And it's not true. Actually, both types of learning have their role to play. They both have their benefits and their disadvantages. In the context of teaching, some might find that pupils, some pupils prefer instruction, some pupils prefer to discover things, or maybe some subjects are better discovered, especially like the practical ones, like carpentry and all, all the other trades almost. But the point is ultimately that neither of them are superior to one or the other, inherently. And the second thing is that the misconception that learning by instruction is a passive process, which is absolutely untrue. Well, discovery is very active on the self, on the individual. Learning by instruction may be less so, but it's still you, the student, who has to get the concepts that are being communicated to you and then be able to process them in your mind to increase your understanding. <clears throat> it's still you who has to understand the top, the concept in your own way because we all have different ways of learning. And with this in mind, this knowledge of the two methods of learning, let's say, it can help our reading because it can allow us to almost divide the, the way we learn in half. We can learn half by instruction, using commentaries, YouTube videos even, or on what the book is telling us, or the, the source material. And the other half of the learning comes from discovery. What we interpret from the book, what the conclusions we draw from our own experience in reading. And I will, um, develop these ideas further on in other videos but if there's one like, take, practical takeaway from this that I want for you is if you come up with a concept if you come across a concept, sorry <clears throat> a sentence in a book 
that you don't immediately wrap your head around, I want you to try, through discovery, to explain it in your own words. And the reason that's discovery is because at first the sentence just seems like word salad, right? And it, it may just be confusing to you. But after some thinking, you begin to see, okay, actually that makes sense. I can explain it in my own words. And because once you can explain it in your own words, that shows you've understood it because you're no longer limited to the words. If you ask someone like a question and they just re basically reiterate the same thing to you in the answer, they didn't understand it, they just understood the words, not the actual concept, the deeper concept behind it. Whereas if, if you can understand the concept, you can explain it to me in 20 different ways, with 20 different words, and it's, it's just that you understand the, the foundation of it. The words don't matter at that point. I actually have an example here. Where is it written? Yeah. Nothing acts except what is actual. Nothing acts except what is actual. It sounds confusing at first. What does that mean? Nothing acts except what is actual. And it's a fun game to play to, to see what that means and then explain it in your own words. Nothing acts except what is actual. Well, acting is when you inflict something on someone else, I suppose. Or when there's a process that the entity does on something else. An action, a verb, let's say. And what does it mean to be actual? Well, that's being. Something that's actual is something that's real. If, not, if nothing exists, if something doesn't exist, it's not actual, it's not actually there. And I think the right answer to this is to have an act. See, I'm, I'm reiterating the words, I'm guilty. To have an effect on something, let's say, you have to exist first. And see, it's, it's fun, I even, disobeyed my own rule there and that's the point I need to understand it properly and once I can rephrase it it means I, I get what the message is essentially and that's that's a fun exercise to try whenever you see especially in philosophy these confusing clever sounding phrases that don't make sense at first so that's what I would do the next time I see something like that. And it kind of actually can be a fun activity, to be honest, because it forces you to really get involved in just a few words and expand them to something bigger. And that's the point. Do the same when you next read something.